Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about HP ProLiant DL385P Gen 8 server memory upgrades and how to properly install and configure your memory. Well, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the HP ProLiant DL385 Gen 8 server today. Don't forget to click that like and smash the subscribe. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for starters, if you're familiar with the uh, 380p Gen 8 from a memory standpoint, it's literally the exact same system. Uh, the real difference is the CPUs. And on that note, this system has uh, two CPUs. It's a dual socket. Uh, they take AMD Opterons, either the 6200 or the 6300 series, which is a G34 socket. Uh, that's really kind of the unique difference of this machine as a whole. And whenever you see for HP uh, 5 at the end, like uh, 385 or 365, that's basically uh, the 5 is shouting out that it has AMD procs. Uh, the 0, like a 380, is shouting out that it takes Intel. So that's really kind of the difference. So uh, this machine has 24 DIMM slots. It accepts DDR3 memory. There's a number of different sizes that you can put in, as low as a 1 gig stick, 2 gig stick, 4 gig stick, 8 gig stick, 16 gig stick, or all the way up to a 32 gig stick. I'm Unfortunately, uh, there are no 64 gig modules that will work for this system, so 32 would be the max that you could put in. Uh, there's a number of different speeds you can put in as well, low as uh, 1066, uh, 1333, uh, 1600, or all the way up to 1866. And on that note, the max that you could do for this machine depends on the type of RAM that you're using, and it takes two types of RAM. You have a uh, uh, load reduced memory, which is also known as an LR DIMM, or you have ECC registered, which is also known as an R DIMM. With ECC registered, the max unfortunately is only 512 gigabytes. You can put in 16. 32 gigs at a top speed of uh, 1600 megahertz. With LRDIM, however, you can load it up completely and put in 24 32 gigs for a total of 768 gigabytes at a max of uh, 1866. And then people ask, well, why can I only put in uh, 16 uh, DIMMs with ECC registered and I can put in 24 with LRDIMs? That is a great question and a mystery for a lot of people, and that is what we call the rank rule. And we'll get into that a little bit further uh, once we open up the machine, and I can show you the memory channels because it's a little bit easier to explain. Um, so let's actually let's do that. Let's uh, hop in. But before we do, I'm going to grab my uh, ESD gear, and I'm going to be right back. And we're back, and we have our ESD gear on, so we are safe to open the machine. First things first, you want to make sure the latch is set to unlock. Simply pop it open and lift the top up, pretty much like any machine you've really worked on before. Now that we're in, you'll notice a couple of things here. Uh, there is an air shroud or an air baffle, depending on your terminology, that is on top and it's covering the uh, two heat sinks uh, and all the modules. Uh, if you're not familiar with the air shroud, it's really just there for um, uh, airflow and making sure that the modules and the heat sinks for that matter uh, stay cool and they don't get overheated. Uh, just about managing the airflow is all. So uh, what you want to do is uh, take these two buttons right here and you're going to push them in. So you're going to go like this and just lift straight up, okay? Nice and easy. If you were wanting to access the uh, CPUs, which uh, we're not gonna do, but uh, you just wanna pop this open, you can lift this up and uh, with a screwdriver, you can get the, um, the, the heat sinks out and, and swap out your, um, your CPUs. All right, well, now that we are in, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the uh, memory channels and the rank rule and kind of how that applies to ECC registered and load reduced. So uh, first things first, we discussed there are two CPUs. CPU one controls the uh, 12 DIMM slots on this side of the board. CPU two controls the 12 DIMM slots on this side of the board. This is important for the fact if you are only using one CPU, then you need to make sure all your modules are on this side of the board. You physically could not um, uh, register the modules physically would not register if uh, you only had one CPU and you put them on this side of the board. So that's important to note. Um, you will notice that on CPU one there are 12 DIMM slots, which means there are four memory channels per CPU, and there are three DIMM slots per memory channel. And the key is the three DIMM slots per memory channel because that's where the rank rule comes into play. What the rank rule states is that you can only have eight ranks per memory channel. And this is very important because all DDR3 ECC registered modules are quad rank. So if you do some quick math, if you put three quad rank modules in a channel, that gets you to 12. You break the rank rule and you go over eight. So you can only put two quad rank 
uh, 32 gig ECC registered modules per memory channel which gets you only 16 which is hence why you only have 512 gigabytes um, with load reduced modules simply put it's a better technology it breaks the rank rule they are also quad rank but it doesn't matter and you can completely load the machine up so basically we always recommend if you're looking to max out your machine load reduce modules because it's a higher scalability okay now if you are using ECC registered modules um, and it's like say a 16 gig quad rank or a 32 gig quad rank you need to make sure that you put the the two dims in the start of the channel so that would mean the white and the first black and you would skip the second black which is the third dim in the channel so then it would go again white and then black skipping that uh, second black which is the third dim in the channel and then again white and then black and then skip and then white and then black so if you look at the tabs here that would be the proper way to configure with quad rank now again if you were using uh, load reduced memory guess what you can max it all out which is awesome so uh, that's what we recommend again is uh, load reduced um, and that's actually what we're building for this customer right now uh, we're actually going to put in 768 gigabytes using uh, 32 gig 1866 load reduced modules which is the top of the line for this machine and that's generally what we recommend so I'm going to show you how to actually insert the modules before we do you don't have to do this at home I'm going to do this strictly because it makes it easier for the camera and for you guys to see we're going to pull these uh, fans straight out so you can just get a little bit better view of the modules uh, the, of the uh, dim slots themselves so um, before we get going, one of the first things that I always, uh, I'll, I'll, one of the first things that I always like to do is to make sure uh, all my tabs are opened up. Uh, there's no point in fumbling around with a module in your hand, uh, worried about tabs. You could potentially uh, drop the module or misalign it on accident, and uh, you know, you could damage the module or damage the motherboard itself. So uh, personally, just take a couple seconds, just pop them all open and get them all ready to go okay one other thing i'd like to note before we uh, get going is there is a notch right here also known as a key this is very very important because this key right here um, is not perfectly centered and it is important for how you insert the module if you flip it the wrong way you could do one of two things you could damage the dim itself or you could damage the uh, dim slot potentially having to replace the whole motherboard which can be a very very expensive mistake so just simply lining the notch up or lining the key up is very very important okay so for us it's going to be lined this way um, i'm going to go ahead and start with the start of the channel channel one over here get it all lined up perfectly and so you will notice so the module is physically in right now it might feel like it's in but it's not in um, and this is a, a common problem that we hear from users where they feel like they have a bad dim but the dim is actually perfectly fine it's just not fully seated and if it's not fully seated of course it's not going to register with the machine so here's what you need to make sure you hear listen for this click right here hear that click on both sides um, and you'll also notice that the tab has physically popped in and it's in the notch of the uh, the module itself okay so we're going to go ahead and do that again I want to show you just line it up get it in proper and listen for the click you hear the click really it's that easy so I'm going to go ahead and load them all up right now and just show you how simple it really is to do All right, and I'd like to note the key switches on the other side. So this is an important thing to note because, again, you could just be getting in a good flow, feel like you're moving and grooving, and then boom, you damage a board or damage a module. So just little things. Um, and I also like to note, you, if you notice on this last one, I kind of got myself in a little trouble because, um, you know, I was starting with the channel because I wanted to show you guys the start of the channel, but then they got a tight squeeze here at the end, and it, it's just kind of difficult to get it in when it's right against the heat sink. So I'm actually going to start differently over here, even though it's not the start of the channel. Um, I'm going to start in here just because um, it's a, a tight squeeze, and I'm filling it up anyway, so it doesn't really matter where I start. But if I were not maxing it out, of course, you have to start at the, the beginning of the channel. So. All right, and we're on our last one. And as I said, I kind of worked my way back to the middle 
just because it makes it easier on this last one to drop it in. Um, and just like that, we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together. Uh, we're gonna put the fans back in. I just need to line this up properly and click this back shut. Okay, and then we're gonna put the air baffle back on. Uh, you'll notice that you can't just set it back on. You do need to squeeze the clips in again and you'll hear it kind of lock on and you can't pull it back up. It's fully down. And then simply put the top back on and just like that, uh, I mean in a matter of a couple of minutes, we were able to fully upgrade our DL385P Gen 8. So if you guys are looking for any upgrades for your Proliant DL385P Gen 8, uh, then please give us a ring uh, or email sales at cloudninjas.com. And if you made it this far, do us a favor and please uh, smash that subscribe button. We appreciate uh, all of our followers and everyone that uh, likes our videos. So thanks for stopping by today and you have a wonderful day.